What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to use the limit comparison test. So here is the limit comparison test, and now let's look at a few examples. So for this first example here, we're going to use the following trick, that when we're trying to come up with the comparative series, what we want to think about is just the leading terms, because we have a rational function here. So we're going to think about n over 2n to the third, which if we do the algebra simplifies to 1 over 2n squared when we simplify n over n to the third. But when we're choosing our b sub n, all we need is the simplest form of this corresponding sequence, which would just be 1 over n squared. And this trick is going to work because when we set up our limit in a moment comparing the original series to this sequence, which we are going to throw in a series in a moment, that's going to help us get to our conclusion. So what we need to say here is that we're going to say that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, this is a convert. This is a convergent p-series. So this is a convergent p-series. And the reasoning, how do we know, is because the exponent, the p-term here, is 2, and that's greater than 1. So we know that we have a convergent series that we're comparing this to. So by using the limit comparison test here, we're setting, us, uh, we're setting ourselves up to say that the original series converges. Once again, like what gives it away from me is when I look at the leading terms, that gives me a sense of whether or not the series converges or diverges. So now we actually have to do the limit. Because remember, if you're using the limit comparison test, like you actually have to find a limit at some point. So we have n over 2n to the third plus 1. So this is kind of like our a sub n term if we use the theorem that you have from before. And then we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n. Like this. So now we just do a little bit of algebra. And we can rearrange this. This is going to be n over 2n to the third plus 1 times n squared over 1. So now this is just going to be the limit as n goes to infinity if we simplify this of n to the third over 2n to the third plus 1. So from this step here, if we want to close this out, one thing, that we have to, one thing we have to make note of here is what does this actual limit work out to? And this works out to, if we look at the leading terms they match, it's going to work out to 1 half which we have to note if we're using the limit comparison test that this value that we found is positive and it's finite. Okay, so this is just something that we have to specify. So now we could draw our conclusion here. We could say by the limit comparison test, the original series also converges. For the next example, we'll look at something that looks a little bit more geometric. So what jumps out at me right away when I look at this is the leading terms. We have 9 to the n over 10 to the n, which I could call this a few things. I could use the algebra and combine this to 9 over 10 to the n, which is coming from, we'll make that a little neater. So 9 over 10 to the n power. And the algebra that we're using is that when I have a to the c times b to the c, this is equal to parentheses a times b to the c. So this is just a helpful little bit of algebra to know for geometric series. But this is going to be my b sub n term. So I'm going to let b sub n equal 9 to the n over 10 to the n. And the form that it's in now, this form is actually going to be easier to do the algebra with. So I'm going to leave it like this, but sometimes I like to switch it back and forth. So here we have to just look at the comparative series. So what we could say is as a series from n equals 1 to infinity, we have 9 to the n over 10 to the n. And now this is how we're going to rearrange it. it. Is equal to, and we have a series from n equals 1 to infinity of 9 tenths to the n. But we have to recognize this as a geometric series, and it's a convergent one. So this is a convergent geometric series. And we have to think about why is this a convergent geometric series. And it all has to do with the value of r, the common ratio. So this is a convergent geometric series because the r value is equal to 9 tenths and the absolute value of 9 over 10 is less than 1. So these are the conditions to have a convergent geometric series. So this is set in the stage to show that the original thing converges because we're stating that the comparative series is a convergent geometric series. So now we just go ahead and do the algebra. So we have to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the original thing which that was a long time ago. That's 9 to the n over 3 plus 10 to the n. So we have 9 to the n over 3 plus 10 to the n. And we're going to divide by the comparative series we have, or the comparative sequence of the series 
9 to the n over 10 to the n. Now, just know when I divide by 9 to the n over 10 to the n, if you're comfortable with just going right to the algebra, you could just multiply by 10 to the n over 9 to the n like this. But just so I don't skip too many steps, because this is like meant to be instructional, I'm just going to show all the work. So we have 9 to the n over 10 to the n, and now we do the algebra, and we have the limit as n goes to infinity, and we've got 9 to the n over 3 plus 10 to the n times 10 to the n over 9 to the n. So then here, this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of. And now we can multiply these two using that algebra rule again. a to the c times b to the c equals ab to the c power. So if we do 9 times 10, well, we have 9 to the n times 10 to the n. That's going to be 90 to the n power. And if we distribute this, we're going to have 90 to the n plus and then 3 times 9 to the n. Notice I didn't say 27 to the n because this doesn't have a 3. This 3 doesn't have an n attached, so just be careful of that little bit of algebra. But now when we have limits at infinity, the most important terms for determining the limit are the leading terms. So I could simplify this to just the limit of the leading term on top and bottom, which is going to be 1, and 1, we could say, is positive and finite. So our limit here, we could just note, is positive and finite. So then what does that tell us? That tells us that the limit comparison test applies and that tells us that both series converge or both diverge but we already said that the comparative series, the geometric series we're using is a convergent geometric series so that means the original series converges as well. Now this example is definitely a bit tricky because it's not so obvious as the last one because now we have a trig function but one of the traps in this question here, if someone's not careful, they might look at this and say the limit as n goes to infinity of sine 1 over n is equal to sine of and 1 over n goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. And people are going to be tempted to say, oh, this series converges because the limit here is going to 0. But you have to be careful. This is a bit of a trap. Remember, the nth term test is a test for just divergence. So when we take the limit as n goes to infinity and we get 0, we have to keep going. So then what is going to actually help us here? And we have to think of this limit. The limit as theta goes to 0 of sine theta over theta. And this limit's equal to 1. So the strategy here is going to be to define b sub n to match the argument or the inside of sine. So b sub n in this case is going to be 1 over n. And we know here that the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over n is divergent because it's the harmonic series. So we could say that this series is divergent because and in parentheses here we could just say the harmonic series this is actually like a very convenient series to use with the limit comparison test because it's so easy to explain why it diverges so then here now we just have to apply the limit comparison test and see if we get something positive and finite so we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the original sequence of our first series and we're dividing that by the b sub n term 1 over n so when you look at this here, if you recognize that this is in the shape of the sine theta over theta limit as theta goes to 0, and this is equal to 1, then you're done. Hypothetically, though, if you forget this, what you would do is you would calculate the limit the hard way, and you'd say, all right, this is going to work out to sine 0 over 0, which equals 0 over 0. And if this limit is in indeterminate form, that means we could use L'Hopital's rule. So this is a good chance to just review some of the old stuff. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity. And now when we take the derivative of sine 1 over n, that's going to be cosine of 1 over n. And then the derivative of 1 over n, we could say is negative 1 over n squared. But let's say we forgot and we don't feel like doing all the work. Well, it's equal to the derivative with respect to n of 1 over n. But when we apply L'Hopital's rule, we're going to be doing the derivative with respect to n of 1 over n on bottom as well. So you see this trailing piece is going to cancel out with this piece on bottom. Once again, we could just say cosine 1 over n times negative 1 over n squared divided by negative 1 over n squared. But I'm just pretending here like we don't actually want to do the power rule. We could just write this in terms of the derivative. So now here we work this out. And this is going to work out to cosine. Well, I'll write it with the limit here. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of just cosine 1 over n. And now this is going to go to cosine of 1 over infinity, which goes to 0. And cosine of 0 is equal to 1 which is positive and finite. So this is going to allow us to use the limit comparison test. So this is positive and finite. So what we could say here is by the limit comparison test, 
both series here are going to diverge. Remember, one of the sneaky details and what makes this test sometimes tricky to use is you have to know that if you are introducing a series that's divergent and the limit comparison test does apply, that implies that both tests diverge. So just know, once again, if you introduce a series and the series is a divergent series, if the limit comparison test does check out, it will tell you that both series diverge. So that's going to conclude example three. So this is an example that definitely looks a bit intimidating, but what it really highlights is that you have to show up to calc exams being very prepared, knowing stuff before series. So you really have to know your trigonometry for some of these questions. And the best way to go through something like this is you have to understand what the graph of arctangent x, also known as tangent inverse x, you have to know what this graph looks like. So if I sketch this out here, this graph has two horizontal asymptotes. It has a horizontal asymptote at negative pi over 2, and it has one at positive pi over 2. And if we sketch this, it starts at the origin, and it goes like this, and then it goes like this. So how does this actually help us? Well, what that tells us here is that the maximum value of arctangent is not even pi over 2. It's approaching pi over 2. So when I'm setting up my comparative series here, I have to note that while this is an intimidating piece on top, this is at most equal to the constant pi over 2. So I could let b sub n equal a few things. I could let it equal 1 over n to the 1.2, or I could let it equal pi over 2 over n to the 1.2. I'm going to leave it just like this with the 1, because when we write our explanation, we don't have to explain why there's a constant other than 1 up top. So I always like to, if I can, is use a p-series. I always try to let the numerator equal 1 if it's possible. So here, what we have is we're going to say, and let's just make this neat, that the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1.2, this is a convergent p-series. And once again, think about why. Why is this a convergent p-series? And it's because the exponent 1.2 is bigger than 1. So we just have to specify that here. That this is a convergent p-series because p equals 1.2, which is greater than 1. So now we are setting ourselves up here to use the limit comparison test. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of, and we have arctan of n over n to the 1.2, and we're introducing b sub n equals 1 over n to the 1.2. So that's what we're going to divide by in our limit. Now, if you could do this algebra real fast, then great. I mean, when I see this, I just say, oh, n to the 1.2 cancels this because they're both in the denominator. So you could do the keep change flip here, but I promise those will cancel out, and you'll be left with arctangent of n. But now this is where knowing the graph is really going to help. So if we look at the graph of arctangent, as the inside goes to infinity means we move all the way to the right. So what happens as our variable goes to infinity, x or n, that tells us that we're heading towards this horizontal asymptote, y equals pi over 2. So that would be our limit here. And we have to note that pi over 2 is positive and finite. This throws people off sometimes. People say, wait a minute, this is positive and finite, but I thought pi is irrational and it's an infinite decimal. But just note here, when we say finite, we mean it in the sense that this is referring to a real number. So it's a number that has a specific static location on the number line. It's not moving. When we say infinite, we mean like infinity where it's just increasing forever and ever, and it's not an actual number. So this allows us to draw our conclusion. Since we introduced a sequence which in the series would build a convergent p-series, by the limit comparison test, we could say that both of these series are convergent. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on using the limit comparison test. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.